Hey, it's Stephanie Pruitt, and this is day five of 30 by 30 by 30, where I am writing 30 poems in 30 days inspired by works in the 30 Americans exhibit at the Frist Center for the Visual Arts. And before you say that I am cheating, I am sitting in my car, but I'm in the parking lot at the Frist Center. I just went through the exhibit, and as I was leaving, they were sitting up for an event with musicians and all kinds of tables and stuff like that, and I knew it would be kind of messy or awkward trying to do a video blog in the midst of all that so I'm sitting in the parking lot writing my doing my blog with you but you see that I do have the 31 can you see that wait which way do I go backwards there we go you see I have the 31 on my shirt so I was there today so I drafted a poem in relation to crone huntress crone huntress is a mixed media bundled sculpture by Shanique Smith. Smith uh, was born in Baltimore, Maryland in 1971. She's living in Brooklyn, New York now. And Crone Huntress takes clothing, um, fa all kinds of fabric, seemingly found objects, but I, I have the sense that they were very uniquely and specifically sourced. But all these different objects, and it it's all bundled tightly into the form and shape of a woman sitting on a stool. There's so much happening, so much to unpack. It made me think in some ways about consumer culture and just stuff and our habit of gathering, gathering, gathering stuff. But then I looked at the title a little more closely, Crone Huntress, and wanted to figure out the relationship there and that maybe the narrative that was possibly being built through this sculpture. So I looked up the word crone and crone is a withered witch-like old woman. And that made me think about the things that age us, maybe make us bitter. And I wondered if all of the stuff or something kind of in this process was traumatic in a way. I don't know, a lot to unpack there. But let me just read the draft and then I'll talk a little bit more about the process. What's in your bustle? Packed and wrapped so tight? A coat? Glass horses, bags, a sword, last night's pajamas, a trophy, flannel shirts, flowers and alms for the gods, linoleum tiles on a wool rug. It don't make sense. What do you carry? Must be the stuff you don't want walked away with. What is packed on till it becomes part of the body? forming a silhouette, a shadow, an act to cast and throw. Uh, for As a working title, I'm thinking about what we carry, what we pay as alms, maybe, we'll see. Um, but the other thing that's really significant about, about today for me is, I told you I pulled out my cell phone to look up a definition, right? Well, a couple of years ago, if you had asked me what I needed to write, I would have had a whole list, mostly creature comforts like, you know, warm wool socks, a cup of tea or, you know, stuff like that. But part of my list would have also included an OED. That's the Oxford English Dictionary. These big, heavy honking, it's a two volume book, like this thick, big, heavy, you know, probably 10, 10 or 12 pounds. You actually need a, um, a magnifying glass to see the words, they're so small. That would have been on my list because I love words. I love the history of words and the OED does all that. But the thing is, this is a big book. I'm not going to carry it around with me. So that really tethered my writing to my house. Fast forward a few years, I'm in a public place with a cell phone. And what it made me recognize isn't so much about the specific tools, wasn't even a comment on technology versus, you know, analog or, you know, the book versus a cell phone. The thing is, there are certain processes, creature comforts, habits that I do believe enable creativity. Those are really important to me. When I can figure out what activates my creative process, then I'm empowered to make that happen wherever I am, whatever situation I'm in. The challenge comes when I define things so specifically that they become more of rituals or even, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, do, 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 word stuffing. Superstition. There we go. When it, they become ritual or superstition versus conditions. For example, for me to say, I have to have my OED in order to write a poem, that's extremely limiting. It's like a ritual, an item that I'm so dependent on. Instead, if I say, 
it's really helpful for me to have. I need resources. I need spaces where I can gather information. That could be a cell phone. It could be a library. It could be a knowledgeable person or somebody miscellaneous nearby. It could be me recognizing my expertise in an area and that I can count on myself as a resource. So figuring out the conditions versus a specific kind of locked in thing. Now there are some creature comforts that make it a lot easier and I completely honor my creative process in that way. I prefer to write either with gel pens that dry quickly, so a smooth, smooth inked, you know, fast drying pen or a soft wood lead pencil. So I have some, I do have some fairly specifics even down to the brand that I prefer and I will absolutely indulge myself in those things and get them. But if I get to a point where I say, oh, I can only write with, you know, this type of ink pen, well, golly gee, what happens if the ink pen company goes out of business or I switch bags and I don't have that pen with me that day? I don't want to limit myself. However, it is really valuable for me to reverse engineer what works and take parts of that that might be transferable. So with 30 by 30 by 30, I'm often coming from, you know, maybe teaching or a conference or something where I'm hurry, hurry, rush, rush. I'm quickly figuring out ways to get myself in that writing kind of space. One thing that's working really well for me is there's a long corridor or hallway as soon as you walk into the Frist Center from the back parking lot. And I very consciously walk through this hallway. I start slowing down my steps and I slow my breathing. My goal in general is by the time I get to the end of the hall, my in breath and my out breath to be at a count of like 12, like a count to 12 each in breath, count to 12 each out breath, that type of thing. So here's where it's potentially dangerous. If I were to get to the point where I say I have to count my steps, count my breaths, and I can't write today unless by the time I get to step number 89, I'm at breath, whatever, whatever. Instead, for me to say, I need to be relaxed and open and focused to write well. That's empowering. And this isn't just for artists. This isn't just, you know, something that we do when we sit down at our writing table or in the studio. I mean, this is great wherever you work, however you spend your hours. What are the atmospheres, the conditions, the tools that really push your creativity, your innovation, your figure it out mentality and that might be having your desk and your chair facing a window or maybe facing the hallway because you like to see people walk by but saying that I have to have my chair towards XYZ might become limiting in some situations maybe you can say fresh air or you know natural sunlight is helpful and that means maybe you go take a walk during the day I don't know the particulars but there's just something to figuring out the habits the rituals the superstitions and how those can be creative activators versus closers and kind of figuring out the difference between the specific items and the conditions and how you can how you can really use that for your benefit it's helpful for me all right, y'all have a good one. I'll talk with you soon. You saw the 31. Tomorrow you will see the number one. We're in a new month. Take care.